God, how crazy. <laughs> okay, I think we're live. We are live. Hey, y'all, I was having serious technical difficulties. So welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. And Cassie Joy is already on here because we've been fighting StreamYard for about 10 minutes. Hey, Cassie Joy, it's nice to meet you. Virginia, it's so nice to meet you. I feel like we've bonded, right? We, we've, we've been through something now. <laughs> the whole, oh my God, the glamorous life of a cookbook author. There you go, right? That's right. Well, I am so thrilled to pieces to have you on. So let me hold up the book and I'm going to go through the regular process of how I normally start the show, not with my pants on fire. How about that? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, good. So y'all, this is welcome. This is Cook Once Dinner Fix. Welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. As you can see, I've got Cassie jo Joy Garcia here with me. I'm just thrilled to pieces about your book. I love your book. Thank you so much. It's a I'm great so book. It's a great book. So y'all, this is a, we've got it all over the place. So we've got a giveaway over on Instagram that you can um, enter to win. You follow Fit, Fit and Fet and then you follow me and then you get to win a book. We've got an interview here now. Um, this is Cookbooks with Virginia. It's every Friday at 1130. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> 11, every Friday at 1130. And um, every week I get to talk with different cookbook authors that I want to talk to. So it's really super cool. <laughs> and I heard about this book and I just, I love the idea. I love your health journey. I love all of it. So thank you so much and welcome, welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. Thank you so much for having me, Virginia. Oh my God, this is too, that was too crazy, that whole thing. So <laughs> I love your story and, and how you developed your website and you're the, you're, you've already written a New York Times bestselling book, Bravo, yay you. So, um, so tell me, um, t tell us a little bit about your story. Tell us, tell, tell the folks a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, I would love to. So I started Fed and Fit. I started it as a personal blog of all, you know, like a yeah. lot of books are really getting started, you know, uh, yes. these days. Yep. And that was a little over 10 years ago. Wow. I started uh, Fed and Fit that way. Um, and it started off as just a way to share some of my lessons learned in trying to get healthy. I find that I tend to take the windy path to lessons learned, uh, the extra windy path. There's loop-de-loos here and there. And I thought, gosh, if I can share some of my hard lessons learned and help somebody else maybe cut some of those corners, uh, what an honor to be able to do that. And so that's what I did. I, By way of just changing the type of food that showed up on my plate, I was really able to unlock a totally different way of health for myself. And I didn't even know it was possible. I didn't know some of the chronic pain in my knees and my hips, for example, were optional. I, until I changed some things. And so as I started, and when I started feeling great after changing some of the foods I was eating, I didn't want to give it up, you know, but I love food. And so I needed recipes that would support it. And so I started sharing recipes. That's where that really started. Uh, from healthy, wholesome ingredients, went on to become a holistic nutritionist so that I could help other folks uh, answer really great questions that they had. And then, um, and then it's my career just blossomed since then. I found my, I think of myself as a problem solver in the kitchen and whether it is, how do we create a, you know, a healthier version of a favorite family dish, or if it's, how do we help get a faster, easier, but still delicious dinner on the table that doesn't stress the, the cookout in the home quite as much. Um, those are the kinds of things that keep me busy now. That is just, I love that. I just think, I think it's so amazing. I don't know. Um, I myself have undergone this a tremendous health journey the past two years. And I am just, I love um, hearing stories about other people. I know how transformative it was in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Like I know, you know, how, um, just what a difference it made. And it's just so amazing, like what you described wow. about things that you can do that help you feel better, right? Yeah. That things that you can do that just like completely, and it's like, you know, doing one, two, three. And your approach, I love this, um, you know, never, never throw out leftovers again. Like yeah. I, just, you know, I think that so many people, you know, I know people that won't even eat leftovers and I consider them to be this like, you know, this gift in the refrigerator, right? 
<laughs> yes, and they are a gift. But you know, I think what happens to a lot of folks is we have the best intentions. I'm going right. to eat the other half of that casserole tomorrow. Right. And then tomorrow rolls around and microwaved or maybe not. Maybe you're even going through the extra effort and putting it in the oven to make right. it extra delicious. Right. It just doesn't sound as delicious right. because of food boredom. Right. No, no you don't. exactly. Exactly. You don't have the same dish again. And so there I in thinking about that and then in living that many, many times over, I kept thinking there's gotta be a better way. No, and I love this because you've got I love the um how how it's not just a reheat, right? It's not just a repeat. You know, you take a dish and then really transform it. So it's like tonight's dinner, tomorrow's feast. Like it's a completely different approach. And I I think um in my mind, it's very common for a professional cook, right? Like, a, like a, you know, if you go into a, a restaurant, a chef, you know, she or he has something on the menu one night. Well, they can't just, you know, repurpose it, right? Or it's not a, it's not any good to like just return it into a family meal. Mm -hmm. So they have to be able to turn last night's dinner into tonight's special. So it's just it's it's money in your pocket too, right? Yeah. It is. And it is for the home cook money in your pocket Why? because, you know, if you really the the most budget friendly thing you can do for when it comes to groceries is to use what you've got. Right. Is to eat what you've got. Right. That's usually the biggest hole in most folks uh, budget approach to to feeding, feeding themselves and their families. No, it's so good. And your recipes look so good. So the photographs are beautiful too. I just, I'm I, this, it feels, um, it's like the recipes are a little bit of a stretch, right? Like it's a little bit out of the box for some people, you know, it's not just typical, it's not just meat and potatoes, right? Or, or right. You know, it's, it's a, you know, dry red barbecue biscuit, cheesesteak stuffed peppers, Mongolian beef bowls out of brisket. Like I love that. Yeah. It's really, um, super, uh, just the pork bolognese and y'all we've got some great the photographs are amazing um you must have had so much fun putting this bit together you it was it was a it was so much fun to pull together and we ate really really well <laughs> in the pursuit you know having testing coming up with a recipe and then testing it over and over again and something that i like to do is i do like to keep flavors really interesting and really yeah. various and so, like you said, for example, you know, classic brisket turns into Mongolian style beef bowls the next night so that you're just totally on totally different page in terms of flavors. Right. And, but when it comes to method, I don't have time personally for fussy recipes in my kitchen or anything complicated. And I don't think I'm alone in that. No. And so the recipe development process was writing down what we wanted to make and then studying established methods for making, let's say like a brisket. And then I did the work of like, how do we then trim this down? So it is as simple and straightforward as possible so that even the most beginner home cook can flip open that page of the brisket and say, I got this. Right, right, right. No, I think it's so smart. I always talk about it instead of, you know, you don't want to look at the same thing twice. Right. And then when there's some people I, I used to have some dear friends and their in-laws were like defiantly opposed to leftovers. Right. And so it was like, um, so we put a day in between. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And which is always also a good idea because it's it's still food safe two days later. Right. So even if you do have this wonderful chicken dish the next night and then like you're like you get given a recipe for the next night, there's absolutely no reason you can't put a day in between. And that sort of increases the distance, right? Yes. And that's actually how I personally meal plan. Um, this book is ex is how I actually cook from home. And I yeah. have been for a really long time. I'm a mom of, I get to be a mom of these two incredible little kiddos, a three-year-old and a one and a half year old, soon to be another newborn and about oh two months. Oh my gosh. Just, oh, just yay. oh my gosh, look at you. I had no idea. <laughs> oh man. And I just, I've had to figure out a way to make this easier and more straightforward. Um, and that's, a, that's, a, that's how I've done it. And I also want nutrients to be able to be mixed up in my house. So the way that I personally meal plan is, so there's five chapters in this book. We have poultry, beef, pork, seafood, 
of all things is in there. And that's the shortest chapter because it's the trickiest. Uh, I wanted to make everything in here is going to be just really reliable. And then a vegetarian chapter. And so the way that I personally meal plan with this book is I know that because we have a family dinner at least one night a week, we do pizzas on Fridays. Nice. And then I try to do spaghetti and meat sauce with my girls at least once a week. Wow. I know I'm gonna have four nights where I'm needing supper right? That I need to plan it and cook it. And so what I do is I'll choose a dinner series out of say poultry mm -hmm. and a dinner series out of the seafood chapter. And then mm -hmm. I overlap them to your point. Right. 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 So Monday is poultry, not meal one, Tuesday, mm -hmm. seafood meal one. So we're mixing it up and then we come back and do meal two for poultry. And then we come back and do meal two for seafood. I so love that. Right. Not only are the dishes really various and I have in here, I think I say use within on by the third day. Right. Um, you know, if who knows what happens or freeze by the third day, I think right. that's a really wise thing to do. Uh, but yeah, that's a way to keep things interesting. I love it. I love it. Well, also, will you tell for the um, I loved your site, like after seeing this book, I just wanted to dive in. And your journey, like, you know, I think you said that you, you started it in like a 2011, but your site is great. You've got like videos and recipes and newsletters and blogs and all the things. So tell people more about that. And, 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 and you're highly featuring your new book on your site. So I just want people to be able to find you. Oh, thank you, Virginia. I'm really proud. Fedandfit.com has blossomed. I, the dream job term became even dreamier when I got to work with this incredible group of people here at Fed and Fit. And so I have four other colleagues and we all pitch in to help create uh, what you see on the website. And so the website has, I want to say that we're somewhere between a thousand and twelve hundred. I've lost count free Yay! recipes on the website mm -hmm. and they are it's in the same spirit you know, simple, easy, straightforward. These are family friendly meals that you, that we always release and formulate with the lens, through the lens of, you know, it's been a long day and whoever the cook is, is now, is now preparing dinner. So that's going to be the lens through which we prepare it along with other fun things. You know, as a holistic nutritionist, I can't help but have a desire to cater to folks who have special dietary needs. And so whether, and that's what's also is in this book, but you'll find it on fedandfit.com, are considerations for grain-free, uh, gosh, dairy-free, egg-free, mm -hmm. keto-friendly, all the I different things. I love that. And all, yeah, all your recipes here have it. And I love that. And I think it's so important. Um, I had a family member that was, uh, dairy, certain dairy free mustard, like a couple different things. Right. And, um, the way that I think about hospitality is that when someone sits at the table, I want to be able to serve this, right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be able to serve. Well, here's yours. And then here's yours. Yes. So there's no reason. And there's no reason, right? Like, you know, if someone can't have butter, then you use oil. If someone can't have oil, then you, you know, you poach it or, you know, there's a way to work around it so that everyone is welcome at the table with the same dish. Absolutely. And there's something so heartwarming about that. Yeah. You know, whenever I'm hosting, for example, I try to do that. Also, I boil it down to the right. lowest common denominator of yep. what can everyone have? That's what I'm cooking. I'm not going to make several varieties of the same dish. No. And then the other thing with that is, of course, it, it makes it easier on you to cook. Right. right. Because yeah. you're not having to worry about, oh, well, Bob can't have that, but Jane can have that. I have to make two things. I mean, it really is like you're saying. It's like it's smart cooking. So, y'all, you, what you, what you want to do is you want to head to Instagram and you're going to look for the cover of Cook Once Dinner Fix and you're going to follow the instructions there. And we've got things going on all weekend and we've going to keep promoting it and you can enter to win and you can enter to win as many times as you want. What you just need to do is tag a friend every time. So what was the biggest surprise? Like, did you have any huge surprises when you were working on this book? I mean, I know that, you know, recipe development can be tr so tricky. Like you have one thing in mind and then it starts over here and it winds up over here. So what were some of the surprises that you had, like putting, you have 120 recipes. <laughs> There's a lot. You know, I tend to be a little uh, adventurous with uh -huh. flavors, if you kind of may have gathered. And, 
you know, it's an appropriate analogy, but really I recipe develop with flavors and experiment by throwing spaghetti on the wall and so to speak, seeing what sticks. And I just really try to go for it. And some of the surprises were things like there's a uh, one dinner series in the beef chapter where we take a roast, a beef roast uh-huh. and rub it in a chipotle rub. It's so delicious. And we do this chipotle is an adobo roast and serve it up with yucca wow. or yuca, depending uh-huh. on how you say it. And then the other half of that planned for extra roast is chopped up and sauteed with a couple t- strategic spices and turned into barbacoa tacos. And it's the fact that that was it, that I thought, I wonder, I wonder if we can turn this Chipotle roast into barbacoa tacos and still have them be different enough. And they, and it worked and it was really exciting. Or in the poultry chapter, for example, there's a garlic lemon chicken, whole roasted chicken uh-huh. right one that we serve with some beautiful roasted vegetables. And then when you're ready for meal two, not, I shouldn't say night two, meal two, whenever you're ready for it, I thought, I wonder if we can turn this into a sticky Asian style sesame chicken dish. And Yum. sure enough, it worked. But you wouldn't think that a rustic chicken, roasted chicken with garlic and lemon zest and butter served up with roasted vegetables would be a natural evolution into sesame chicken. But lemon and garlic are flavors that are used in some of those Asian style dishes. And so it worked, but it was just a little, a bit of a surprise. Right, no, and I love this, like baked falafel bowls into quiche. What? That's kind of crazy. So the baked falafel bowl becomes the quiche. Like, I love that. I mean, I think that that's the whole thing is getting people to like understand that it really is different, dish one and dish two. And it helps you with your family. So you're, cause your family doesn't have any boredom, right? Right, exactly. They don't maybe realize that this is the same thing. Right, but right. You do. And you're, and I hope, I hope you, the cook, are like, way to go, me. Yeah, no, no. Cause it's all about, you know, I always say like the goals in the kitchen are like to make good food, not get cut, and not get burned. Right. <laughs> but if, you know, I mean, that's like the thing. So let me ask you this cause so many people, it's sort of interesting, I've found, um, especially, you know, being Southern and having Southern recipes for so long. And I'm more increasingly like putting more helpful recipes or healthy ish recipes online. And the, the response is interesting. Right. And I'm sure you've experienced this on on one hand, like people are super excited about it. And then sometimes just feel like they, they have this, what I would say is a misperception, but they have this perception that, Oh, it's healthy. It's not going to taste good. Oh, so yeah. what's your answer to that? Because I feel like we just need to get our megaphones out and say, you know, you can be fed and fit, right? <laughs> and it can taste good. I would say to the person that thinks it's healthy and not going to taste good, that I was also one of those people. Ah, I really was. I was highly, sure. oh yeah, I was highly skeptical. So I have made it my job to prove myself wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that. And to really, I mean, my dishes are flavor packed. And so there's not going to be anything boring or mild about it. Um, And there's some tricks that you can employ. And again, in an effort to make it all easy and simple and call for ingredients that you can find at your local grocery store, we can get really clever and really build big, bold flavors. And in some ways, I think that a lot of these nutrient dense dishes because you I lean so heavily on things like for example wilted kale is mm-hmm. I am gonna make myself sound like a like a nutritionist in just a second but it's one of our favorite dishes as a side at home and the reason it's delicious because I I season it adequately with sea salt and a lot of lemon juice and it's yeah. fabulous. Yeah. And so you know I think that I've even found that um, in healthier eating, you can actually build or you'll probably find that some of these foods are even more flavorful because real food is delicious. And if you just layer the right ones on top of each other, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. No, I agree. Yay. Such a cheerleader for you on this. Because I also think, too, that um, there's a little bit about it that people may have to slowly change their taste buds, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're looking at 
a bowl of, you know, piping hot French fries yeah. versus a bowl of kale, that's going to be a stretch for a lot of people, right? Yeah. But um, I actually, I had some leftover cold green beans with a sandwich like day before yesterday and actually like chuckled to myself. If you had ever told me that I would like leftover cold charred green beans with my sandwich instead of barbecue potato chips, I would have thought you're crazy, right? <laughs> Yes, happen, and I think it's part of it. It's not saying that you can't have the barbecue potato chips. It's just thinking that every other now and then you might want to have something other than that, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think about my three and a half year old Grayson, and the way that I've tried to present all the different foods in the world to her is that there's no good food or bad food, right? And you know, it's just all food, and you get to choose what you want. And what I found is that when I so let's say we've got a cupcake in the house or several of them. And she's of course drawn to the cupcakes because they're fun and they're pretty and they're exciting. And she's a cupcake. Yeah. So she says she wants a cupcake. And I say, Great, here you go. And I put it in front of her. And then I say, What else would you like? And she says, carrots or whatever. And she grabs whatever she wants out of the pantry and builds herself this little spread. And you know what she winds up doing is she might taste the cupcake and then she keeps eating all the other things. And so instead of saying you have to eat your five carrots before you can have that cupcake, which wow. creates a, the cupcake must be better. It's a reward. Here, it's a reward. Who doesn't want a reward? Who doesn't, who, what human doesn't want to be rewarded, right? Exactly. This way she can kind of just browse and explore and be like, wow, the cupcake is sweeter and the carrots are crunchier, but they're also sweet. You know, and I think that it just, it allows by reliving and learning food through my daughter's eyes, what a blessing that is, is to be able to see, you know, it really is, it's all just food and you can just choose the ones that you want. And, and the more we know about what things nourish our body, the more exciting it is to make the choice for the green beans. Oh my gosh. And I don't even think I could have become a bigger fan until you just said that, but I am such a fan of that. I love that. I love your, your whole approach. And um, y'all, for those of you that are just turning in, tuning in, let me just reintroduce you. We've got Cassie Joy Garcia here. She's the author of Cook Want, an incredible new book about making dinner once and then having meals from it. Beautiful website, incredible website with, with over a thousand recipes. The book has over 120 recipes. I just, I, I, I love your approach. And I think that that's so true. Um, I always, um, I always sort of bristle when people ask me when I'm interviewed and people are like, what's your guilty pleasure? Yeah. That I don't like to look at food like that. Right. And, um, or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an omnivore and I blissfully, thankfully don't have any known um, restrict food restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, I make choices. Right. But, um, you know, it's like um, someone, will, you know, my mom, sweet things. She'll say sometimes, oh, I made a pound cake, but you can't have any because, you know, I'm just trying to be more mindful of my weight. I'm like, no, I can. Right. You, if, if you can, if there's no reason not to, you mm -hmm. know, if there's not a physical reason not to, then it's right. You know, that it's nice. So I love that you're starting early with your daughter. Yeah. I think women really have a problem with it. Right. It's a challenge and I know it because I've lived it, you know, and I've had my own unhealthy relationship with food and and have worked really intentionally, you know, to help heal that. But it's something I'm always aware of. And in some ways, I'm grateful for it because I think it helps set me yeah. up to be a better guide to her. No, her that, is, that is so wonderful. And I love your authenticity with it, because I think that that's obviously what people are connecting with your first book. I'm certain that they're going to connect with it with this book. And that's you know, why your, your website is so popular. Cause it's just, you know, it's real life, right? Like I yeah. think that um, there's so much on social media and books and stuff. It's like, Oh, if you just do this and it's like, th this is what my situation was. This is how I fixed it. This can work. Yes. Like real life tools. So, well, I'm so glad to have had you on today and I'm just thrilled to pieces about your book and, and so excited to, to try some of these recipes. I have a couple of questions that I ask everybody. Yes. Um, the show. So um, what is, what is one of your favorite um, food memories? And is there a food memory that's sort of relevant to this book for you? Oh gosh, that's such a great question. I mean, a favorite food memory of mine, you know, uh, growing up, my mom would, um, in the kitchen, she was one of those, so I'm one of three girls, 
Okay. The oldest. And she's a phenomenal cook. And uh -huh. I've actually had distant family members ask her when I wasn't around. She said, as people ask her, you know, wow, have you learned things from Cassie in the kitchen? And my mom, I'm like, oh, she taught me everything I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the other way around. Yeah. But when we were growing up, she was one of those really gracious hosts. We hosted a lot. And it was, she instilled a lot of pride in my work in the kitchen in an early age. And even if I was the, I helped like just trim the green beans, snapped off wow. the end and she did all the cooking, you know, yeah. and, all, and all of that. And helping, right? Yes. And she would, when we plated the green beans and I still haven't forgotten those moments where she said, Cassie made the green beans. And oh. I was like, oh, I just snapped the ends off. Okay. But she's very generous in that regard. And so when I think about cooking in the kitchen, I, it's the spirit with which it's not any one particular recipe, but that desire to give credit where it's due because you get to be the hero, you know, and you get to do future you favors and you get to feed your family these fabulous meals. And I just want you to take so much pride in that because it's really, there's, it's a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. No, it's good. And that's so clear. And like I was in the kitchen with my mom at an early age too. I think it really does, you know, set people up for success. It makes me feel sad for folks that didn't get to spend time with a parent, um, yes. dad or mom in the kitchen. And, you know, it's just so important for us when we become adults. And I think I'm, I'm certain you're doing it with your daughters, right? You know, yes. you're, you're doing it. You're so. All right. So there's so much um, content, you know, out in the world. Who are some of the folks that you like to watch that you get inspiration from, whether it's on like YouTube or, or you know, Netflix or whatever? What's some of the content that you like to consume? Oh, my goodness. You know, my favorite blogger and I still follow all of her content. I have to be gluten free. I'm one of those people, unfortunately. Yeah. Yep. But I don't think everybody needs to be. So don't don't hear me there. I, if yeah, you I can eat you. it. I feel you. No, people, I'm, yes. I'm in complete agreement. Yes. Um, and so I don't really usually make a lot of her stuff. But uh, Joy the Baker, Joy yes. Wilson, She's just somebody that I followed from a very early on. And I, I, I think her voice and her writing style mm -hmm. and how she does what you said earlier and what a compliment it was, you didn't know you were giving me, but that this content feels authentic. Yeah. And I drew a lot of inspiration from her in that regard. So that would definitely be one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And there's many, many more who I think are just fabulous along the way, but she comes to mind first. That's so cool. I'm in complete agreement. I love reading her work. And it's just, I think it's just so exciting because there, I mean, on some levels, it's really overwhelming that there are so many methods to receive content. Yes. But on the other, on the other hand, it's like, how exciting. There's so many methods to receive content, right? Yes. You know? Yes. So, um, so on that same note, what would be a, a cookbook that you've read recently, other than this beautiful new book of yours? <laughs> what would be another cookbook that you might have picked up? Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. You know, I, in writing the vegetarian chapter, okay. I'll be honest with you, Virginia, I told my audience, my readers asked for it. They said, I said, yeah. what are your wishes for my next book? And they said, we want vegetarian meals. I thought, uh -oh, okay. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I have lived as a vegan for a solid year in my 20s. I've lived that lifestyle, but it's been a really long time. And I wasn't, I was a little nervous and I got a lot of inspiration from Otto Lingi's books. Uh, yes. I've seen one of them. I mean, talk about just a masterful way to take something as humble as an eggplant and turn it into just a masterpiece, something that you cannot wait to dig into. And so a lot of that inspiration of how do we be, build these very exciting meals from plant-based ingredients uh, came from his work. That's so awesome. You're completely right. It's all about building that flavor. All right. So what is, um, what is one of your favorite cooking tools? My favorite cooking tools. Well, I've got it out. Are you ready for it? It's a little yeah, dirty. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, gosh. Have you seen these green pans? They're ceramic. I cooked my, I made avocado toast in it a little bit ago. I got to put my glasses on for this one. Oh, wow. That is a well-loved skillet, my friend. It is a well-loved skillet. So it's got that white interior. And I really like to use that instead of a Teflon. I have nothing against Teflon. But you know that once it starts to flake, which it will, 
Yep. And, and, and ceramic will also. But as Teflon flakes, it gets into your food and that's just not an ideal situation. Um, and so you need to replace it. If you're watching this and you're thinking I've got flaky Teflon, go replace it. Yeah, um, replace the flaky Teflon for sure. Good advice. Yes. But a good alternative and in a lot of ways you can find them now that are really cost effective is a ceramic nonstick. Yes. And these are, I mean, I'm not endorsing, I have no relationship with this brand, but green pan, for example, mm -hmm. is one that I buy over and over again because mm -hmm. um, it's a great price point and yeah. it is just our go-to for any kind of nonstick method. No, that's a great, that's super great advice. And it's super great advice to people to trans to change out their Teflon and, you know, um, Nonstick. I used to once upon a time a million years ago. It's like nonstick. Nonsticks to look for eggs, and that's it. But I also know that like if you're trying to dial back on some of the fat and stuff like that, nonstick, nonstick can be a really good tool. Right? It can be to be yes. a little bit healthier. All right, last question up, and I'm so I'm just had the best time, and I know that we started with our hair on fire with the tech <laughs> challenges, but I feel like I, I just was so excited to get to meet you. Are you sour, salty, bitter, sweet, or savory? Like, what's your go-to flavor? I think I'm sour. Ah, oh, there you go. You've got such a pretty smile. You have to be sweet, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm sour. I will put lemon juice or lime juice on everything. There you go. I love that because it's, we all are, you know, for those of you that aren't familiar, there's your mouth is happy when it's got sour, salty, bitter, sweet, and savory, but all of this sort of lean a little bit, I think, to, um, to certain flavors. So I want to thank you so much for being on Cook with Virginia today. Y'all, super awesome, beautiful book with Cassie with Cook Once. I'm betting money this is going to be another New York Times bestseller, and best of luck to you. Thank you so much, Virginia. This has been a treat. Yay. Awesome. Well, listen, thank y'all so much for watching again today and please join me next week. We've got lots of great guests this fall. Super excited. Uh, Dory Greenspan, Rose Levy Barenbaum, um, you name it, lots and lots of people. So thanks so much for watching and um, please stay. Uh, join me next week. Bon appetit, y'all. Bye-bye now. <laughs>